course, you could forget all that. And just have fun! Die. Welcome back to TwizzCast, everyone. We are here to bring you all of the news under the Blizzard Entertainment logo, such as uh, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, uh, StarCraft, Diablo, Overwatch, uh, everything. Everything you can imagine. But who are we? Who are we, ladies and gentlemen? Please allow me to make just a few minor introductions. First and foremost, from the great state of North Dakota, uh, the Southern Bell that isn't afraid to grab you, stab you, gank you, and spank you. The one girl who can make you walk into the apocalypse with a can-do attitude. Please help me welcome, welcome back to the show the lovely and talented Reb. Good evening, dear. Good evening, Toys. And I have a cheesy wild joke for you. How does Nax Ramus fly? How does Nax Ramus fly? I don't know. With its four wings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you it was cheesy. Sorry, you get sorry, you get the buzzer for that. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so a valiant effort though. A valiant effort. Uh, from the city that never sleeps, direct from Las Vegas, Nevada, the man who plays a wizard better than Kenny G plays his methodical sexual saxophone. Please help me welcome back to the show the demon slaying Diablo Master 5000, Archon the Wizard. Hello, sir. Thank you so much, Twiz. And lucky for Kenny G, sexual methodical saxophone is the new Diablo class. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It's yeah. the new legendary we're going to talk about later. So yeah. get ready. Get ready for that. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, the man has enough empty beer bottles in his house to pay off half the national debt as soon as he cashes them in. It's the card-slinging Duchess of New York, the legendary Mr. Sexy Stutter. Again, welcome back for another week of beatings, my friend. <laughs> so, I have a new plan for the beer cans. I'm not making furniture anymore. I'm going to send them to Blizzard and give, them, give me some packs. All right. We'll see what happens. It's going to be all moldy and... This be great. I like it. Excited. I like it. I'm a fan. I'm excited. I might tweet at Ben Broad after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. see how far that gets you. <laughs> uh, and for, the, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Twiz. Hello, it is so good to see you guys. Whether you are watching this in the chat room on uh, twitch.tv slash blizzpro or you are listening to this on iTunes, I don't care how it is that you found this, how you got here, I'm just glad that you are here. Uh, you can find me on the Kulturist US server on my Orc Shaman in Twisted Legion, uh, rocking some Thrall in Heroes of the Storm. Oh, we're actually mirrored in more than anything now. Uh, or working my way up the ladder with a Tempo Mage deck that I've kind of been messing around with. Um, you can follow all of us on Twitter. I'm at TwizBP. We have at TankThatReb, at ArchonTheWizard, and at SexyStutterBP. And if you want to email us, you can easily hit us up, podcast at blizzpro.com. So, uh, first things first, everybody. You can get this show in a couple of different ways. One of them I just mentioned, um, and that is on... You can, you can watch us. You can watch us live. You can hang out in our awesome chat room, uh, twitch.tv slash blizzpro. Um, and that is on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Uh, or you can watch the video on YouTube, on the blizzpro YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in blizzpro, and the day after this show goes live, the video is up and uh, available for your viewing pleasure. Uh, last but not least, you guys can uh, check us out on iTunes, uh, where five-star reviews are so unbelievably appreciated so um speaking of speaking of of episodes on um on youtube guys i want to make a, a little bit of an apology last week uh for about the first 12 minutes of the episode that we did the audio was just jacked up i mean it was it was unbelievably screwed up and i i, I saw the chat room telling me like what is going on why is everybody so loud why is it so you know and i was trying to figure out what's going on so let me tell you what happened okay my wife works with a, a lady who has um, two little kids, and one of them is a little girl. Um, she's autistic and everything like that, and she's a single mom, and she's struggling, but one of the greatest people you will ever meet, one of the strongest women you'll ever ever see in your life. Um, and for side money, she cleans houses. And so, you know what? It's like, hey, let's, I've got a wife and two kids, and our house gets insane. And so we're like, so she comes over and she cleans our house for us. And um, so anyways, she cleaned my studio and I'm not a big fan of, of people in my studio. It's my space. All right. It's my thing. It's, it's where I, it's, it's, it's my, my man cave. It's where I hang out. And uh, I noticed that she was in here cleaning and everything like that. 
And what I did not know is that she cleaned the mixer. And upon okay. cleaning the mixer, some of the knobs got moved around. So that's why I like I couldn't figure out why what is going on. Everything sounds normal to me. Why does it not, you know, why does this not sound right to everybody? So anyways, that is that is what happened. I apologize for that. So um yeah, with uh I mean, basically uh the audio quality got thrown off because the cleaning lady was polishing my knob. So Oh damn. And yeah, I know. I know. The show is done. We are done. I know. <laughs> so anyhow, um Okay, everybody. So again, I apologize for. I think we got everything dialed in now. I think we do. But if uh, if you wanted to pay attention to the first twelve minutes, you can download it on iTunes. That is totally fine, and the audio is not screwed up there. So, um, let's. Okay, guys, enough, enough, enough with the not so witty banter. Let's dive right into the good stuff because we have a ton of stuff to talk about tonight. Um, we've got a great show lined up for you guys. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to know about everybody's week in gaming. Reb, why don't you start us off? Sure, let's all start with Reb so that everyone can feel better about themselves because I am apparently a huge nerd that never goes outside and am addicted to World of Warcraft because I now have nine max level characters. That is right, I leveled wow, two more hey. characters to max level. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, but I, I leveled two characters this past weekend to max level, and I tell you what, uh, it was doing six levels on one of them and four levels um, on the other, so it was ten altogether, and getting to 99 is just, from 99 to 100 is just excruciating at this point, doing the exact same pattern over and over again, knowing exactly mm -hmm. which items to grab, exactly which rares I choose to engage and choose not to engage. It is one of those things that is so ingrained in me, but it's becoming so monotonous that I'm kind of glad that I don't have any more 90 plus characters. The last two characters to level are just under 50 and then a level 3. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> what class is this level three? A priest. I've never leveled a priest before. <laughs> I, I just I don't know how to priest whatsoever. No priest it's not bad. As, as much as I love Anduin, I've never leveled a priest. Uh, imagine that. But but no, I am very excited to not have to be in Draenor anymore, as bad as that sounds, uh, and go back to Kata vanilla content and then... Uh, He's my way through the expansions. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of nice to be able to take a break from Janera for some time. But I honestly don't see myself getting back into it and getting the grind this week. Yeah. Uh, because I, I'm just kind of fed up with that for right now. And I have latched onto Heroes like nobody's business. I've been playing so much Heroes of the Storm. And I know my friends would not believe this, but I have the best luck when I'm not playing with anybody and I'm just by myself. I seem to win all the matches. Matches. And then for whatever reason, when I group up with people, it just goes downhill. So all of my friends listening to this are probably like, yeah, right. She sucks. <laughs> she's, she's very much the crush of the team. Um, but I've played so much that I was able to buy the Treasure Goblin mount. And it is so awesome. Do you guys own this mount? I don't. I spent my gold on something else. And I'll talk about it when I get to my week in gaming. Oh, it is, it is so worth it. And honestly, there's a little bug uh, where playing Nova, um, she's running on top of the treasure goblin that's running. So <laughs> it is hilarious. And it is 10 out of 10 so worth it just for that reason. Um, but yeah, that has pretty much been my week in gaming. And I foresee a lot more heroes coming up. And not so much Diablo. So I want to know what's been going on in the world of Diablo Archon. Um, Reb's not there. That's yeah, number that's one. Very true. Yeah, that's the first thing first. QQ, yeah. Well, me and Twiz did a little bit of Diabloing, I think, right after last show, or is that... I can't remember what's the week before. It's becoming like a regular thing. Show ends, me and Twiz do some Diabloing, which is, which is mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. But, I like, um, it. I like yeah, spending time I with Archon. Yeah, so maybe maybe that should be a regular thing, some power leveling with Twiz and Archon mm -hmm. after the show. There's mm -hmm. some incentive. Come watch us live sometime, guys. There you go. There you go. But um, I have some good news from the world of Diablo. After about 540 Paragon levels, I finally found a furnace. And for anyone who doesn't play Diablo, that's not like the one that heats your house. That's a two-handed mace. <laughs> oh. That increases damage to elites. It's like one of the best 
um, legendary weapons, at least as far as the affix goes, and now you can strip affixes away. So the furnace is probably like the number one weapon as far as putting in your Kanai Cube. And I had not found one yet, uh -huh. and I finally found one. All right. Um, All the right. bad news... The bad news is that I immediately salvaged it. Oh, what? Yeah, I okay, I blame Fallout Boy, and let me explain. <laughs> I was streaming, Fallout Boy was on Pandora, and I was explaining to the chat how Fallout Boy is not a good band, and this was a very serious conversation that needed to be had, <laughs> and my brain could not focus on anything but that, and I just... Just salvage, 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 salvage. Immediately looked at the chat and saw my good viewer Kevin said, "Oh, awesome! A furnace. Congrats, Archon." Oh. And it was it was too late. Oh, dude. Yeah. So, so maybe in another 540 Paragon levels, I'll get uh, another one. So I yeah. So that's like a, a one in a million drop rate, huh? It's pretty small drop rate. The, the good news is when you upgrade rares into legendaries, the furnace is one of the easiest to get because there aren't that many legendary two-handed maces. So I can always uh, try again. Oh. Well, you never yeah. know. You know what, dude? It's one of those things like, you know the Diablo gods are going to be like, you know, he didn't mean to do that. We're going <laughs> to give him another one. We're just going to. I gonna... do get the streamer buff sometimes. So. Oh, okay. You, you've you've right. heard of the streamer buff, right? A little bit. Well, all the streamers get extra loot. Oh, right, so that, right, right. You know, it's kind of like in, in Vegas, they put the, the really loose slot machines near the elevator so everyone thinks that they're really good chances of winning. So <laughs> oh, obviously see. developers are going to give streamers a little bonus loot so all the other <laughs> players think like, oh, okay, maybe I'll get a legendary too. Oh, that right. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. No, I totally get it. And then uh, one other thing that happened this weekend, the uh, Heroes of the Storm World Championship was in Vegas, and my friends went, and I did not. I what? I, I know, yeah. I know. I was. I was I'm sorry. thinking of you when I was watching it too. I was like, I bet Archon is eating this no. up. You might have seen two people who look like me because both my brothers were there, and I was so planning on being there, but I just had other things, and so that and wasn't you streaking through there. Sure. It might have been your brother. Okay, that was yeah. That was probably my brother. You <laughs> look very similar naked, dude. but I did <laughs> How watch. Do you know that. Um, one of the I did get to see um, Cloud Nine versus Murloc Geniuses, mm. and those were some pretty good matches. Okay, so Sweet, watched a bit dude. from Twitch. Sweet. But um, yeah, that's about it for me. What's going on in World of Hearthstone, Stutter? Oh, the World of Hearthstone! I've been just been playing freaking Warrior all the time, doing a little <laughs> patron action, uh -huh. trying to get it out. You know, trying to learn that whole deck thing. Patron's a lot of fun. It's pretty corny. And you cannot play it after you've had a few beers. Uh, you true. can't. That's it's true. impossible. <laughs> yep. It is impossible. Yep. Yep. It's, just, it's like it's as simple as that. Uh, I also watched the Heroes of the Storm champ America Championships. Yep. Watched them all. And then that's pretty much it. I mean, I really didn't have much of a life this weekend. Drank a lot fantastic. of beer. I drank way too much. I returned my cans. Did you? Return my cans. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I actually I returned my cans. Like man gonna be so nice i have all That's my right. cans gone and yeah. i walk into my apartment and i see like 30 cans that i missed and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> yeah so me? so you had to go out and load them up in the porsche that you just bought with all the uh all the cans all the money you got from turning those cans in and but i was uh, upset with i was i was like 20 cents underneath a ten dollars mm -hmm. <laughs> which <laughs> <laughs> should i just stop there yeah yes. i mean <laughs> probably probably so, well, as far as uh, as far as my weekend gaming, uh, like I said in the intro, I played a Tempo Mage deck. I'm kind of, uh, it was because I was getting smoked by it, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and play it, and it was all right. It was just an underwhelming deck, and so I saw Masan um, play a uh, uh, kind of a Ramp Druid double combo deck, and so I played that, and I, I did pretty well with that, but I, I, I keep, I, I, I I don't really know what to play anymore. You know, I, 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 I'm kind of, it's not that I'm over Hearthstone, but it's like, boy, I'm really let down at the fact that, you know, TGT has only been around for a couple of weeks, maybe. And I'm already kind of, eh, again, you know, because it's, it's the same decks. It's, you get the, the, the two or three really strong decks and then that's all you see, you know. Um, 
Uh, so I went back and forth on the ladder. You win two, you lose two. You win three, you lose one. You know, make a little bit of headway there. Um, I did get my uh, my warrior in Hearthstone to level 60, so that was pretty sweet. Um, I don't have any golden heroes yet, though, so that'll be the next one. Uh, I I got to a point where I I got like I I would log into Heroes and I, Heroes of the Storm and I would look at all the heroes and like they were all cool and everything, and then I would just log out and I was like, I just I don't know. But then I watched the America's Championship and I'm like, I want in the Nexus and I mean now. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and so, so anyways, I'm like all fired up over that. And, uh, I started playing Muradin and I really, I really, really, really like him. Um, I don't know if I'm really good at him per se. Um, do you die? No, I don't. Then you're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I mean, die and I stun people a lot. So yeah, you then just you're throw good. Q out always and throw W out always and then E out when you're about to die. Like that's Muradin. Yep. Yep. It's just, it's like zero toll. Same type of thing. You go in yeah. there, you do whatever you can, and then you just out you go. Um, but uh, you were talking earlier um, about the uh, the treasure goblin mount. I spent my twenty G's on the doubloon mount. Why everybody's going doubloon versus the treasure goblin? Because I, I think doubloon's way better. To I be do honest. too. I do too. I I just I like it more. Plus, I the got treasure the treasure goblin giggles, and he's very eclectic, kind of. But the disc, yeah, the doubloon is means. round. I don't, I don't, I don't think so, including Rib. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It just doesn't fit perfectly right there. I <laughs> Maybe I should have said it a little bit more confident because you I'm guys good. don't know what it means. <laughs> then you would have been like, "Oh yeah, it was, it's definitely, definitely eclectic." It was the very eclectic kinda that I think they gave it away. I'm googling uh, yeah. it now, though. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> go for it. So, um. Okay, so that I mean that was that was pretty much it. But I'm looking really, really forward to uh, to to, to uh, um, rocking out some more Mirrodin. I'm I'm a huge fan of him right now. So he is my my hot pick of the week. Um, I used to love Chen, and then I met Zex, uh, who's in the chat room right now. And I played. With, he's a huge fan of the Heroes Power Hour show that I do. And um, uh, I found out just how terribly I play Chen. So I just like <laughs> shy away from it now because I feel like. I feel like dad's watching me, you know? So That's so funny. I played with Zex this weekend as well, and he was on Chin, and he rocked it out. I'm telling you, there was a few times where I was so concerned about it, and then just seeing the way that he moves with him, it's like, boy, howdy, as many times as I've played Chin, I have not been able to do that. Hmm. I know. he's He's got it dialed in. Like, he just, he knows every, t- every yeah. It's insane. So I stopped playing it because of him. Thanks for breaking Chen for me, Zex. Um, so, all right, guys, let's get into the uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the show, if you guys don't mind. Uh, why, why don't we just talk about uh, some of the news? Let's do that. Let's do that right now. Hey, guys, this is Pamela Horton, Miss October 2012, and you are listening to Twizcast. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. To me, it looks like a level coming to me. The news. Ain't nobody got time for this. Okay, the Blizz Pro News is brought to you uh, in part by our Patreon page. And this week's awesome, awesome, awesome supporters are Twitch Smartass and Willie. Guys, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much for your support and uh, and keeping the show going. Now, let me tell you what these supporters are doing, okay? By supporting Twizcast on Patreon, you're entering yourself into a way to put a chunk of cash into your pocket. When we reach $500 in pledges... Every other month, we're going to be giving that money back to a random patron. At $1,000, we're going to do the same thing and so on. So if you want a chance at putting a bunch of cash in your pocket, supporting TwizCast is a great way to make that happen. Head over to patreon.com slash TwizCast, and for every $5 you pledge, your name goes in the drawing once. The bigger the pledge, the better your chances are to win. So um, we have you guys in mind at all times, and this is just one of the ways uh, that we give back. And frankly, you deserve it. So uh, before we get into each of the individual gaming or games news. Um, I, I have a little bit of Blizz Pro news, guys. Blizz Pro is looking for writers. Okay, you. I'm talking to you right now, listening to this show. Have you ever like, like looked at something in the news or or found something in game and you said that's a really cool thing? I don't know how many people know about that. Or I just read this and this is my thoughts on this. I wonder if this is going to break this. I wonder if this is going to do this or if this is going to affect the game in this way or whatever and you had those thoughts and you wished you had a place to write them 
blizzpro.com is something that very well may be for you. So um, we're looking for writers for all the games, I believe. I think we might be good on Heroes of the Storm. I'm not 100% sure. But please send all of your inquiries to info at uh, blizzpro.com. So that is an email that goes directly there, and uh, you'll talk to the head cheese and um, you know work some stuff out. But we are definitely hiring, definitely looking to bring people on, um, and you can get all the details ironed out there. So uh, let's talk some World of Warcraft. Another slow week in the World of Warcraft news, but there's a few tidbits that jumped up and made us say, hey, you know what, that's at least worth mentioning. Reb, what's going on in Azeroth, dear? Well, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that if you're in your in our chat room right now and you're listening to this, then the Grinning Reaper mount is on sale for 50% off. So normally it is $25, but it's currently listed at $12.50, so snag that up. The bad news is that if you're listening to this on the download and it's past September 22nd, you're out of luck and the sale is over. But mm. that doesn't mean that it's not still cool enough to own. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, in addition, to watch us live. You get yes. you get much better deals when you watch live. True More up to date information. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to that, the uh, the Heroes of the Storm, Hearthstone, and WoW Arena World Championships, along with the StarCraft II WCS Global Finals, will launch from Burbank, California, between October twenty eighth and November first. And the BlizzCon opening week will host 96 elite esports players from across the globe battling for the opportunity to be crowned world champion at BlizzCon. This is an esports thing that you need to watch, and uh, you'll have plenty of streaming options available at BlizzCon.com for each game. So let's talk a little bit about the WoW Arena World Championship. So the prize pool is $250,000. That's not per person, that's for the team to share. Now, uh, we have eight teams competing. We have three from the Americas, three from Europe, one from China, and one from Asia Pacific. Uh, now, each team will consist of three players. You, ha you can't have a four-man roster, and most choose to do that, but it's essentially three players who are going to be in the arena match, since we only do three V3s. Mm -hmm. uh, you you're going to see that um, the first matches come out in October, or on October 30th through the 31st, and it starts at 1.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Now, uh, something to keep in mind with these matches is that each of the, the two dual tournament groups in the round of eight will compete on October 30th through the 31st. Two teams will actually advance to the round of four bracket played at BlizzCon on November 6th mm -hmm. based on the results. And um, the other two round of four teams will be determined at BlizzCon. Yes. And I'm here so to tell you guys. Are, uh, actually. Go, oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm here to tell you guys that when it comes to like PVP, whether you're into it or not, one of the things that you need to do is you need to watch the finals at BlizzCon. Even if you're like, nah, I really don't like, I'm not good at, I'm not good at it. It never tripped my trigger or anything like that. But to watch it on stream or you know watch it at the event and to hear the crowd going nuts and everything like that, like it really makes you stand back and look at PVP and be like, wow, I kind of really want to get into this. This really mm -hmm. looks like a lot of fun. Maybe I, maybe I didn't judge this the right way. You know, um, that's how StarCraft was for me. Like when I went to BlizzCon, I don't know, two, two, three years ago, whatever it was. Um, I didn't really know much about StarCraft. It was a neat game and everything. I mean, okay, it was it was kind of cool. But I was like, it wasn't until I saw the StarCraft, the uh, the WCS finals, that I was like, whoa, this needs to be part of my life. So hmm. yeah, I agree. I would say if you haven't played or watched much WoW Arena, watch some YouTube videos before BlizzCon because it can be a little hectic. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to follow what's going on if you're not familiar with the classes in the arena. But because I I watched arena for a little while, I haven't played that much. But once I learned it, it became a lot more enjoyable. I think same thing with StarCraft. Yeah, I, I'd say, I have to say with watching the arena matches that um, knowing CCs and knowing the cooldowns and what to watch for so that you really know when they're about to push and try to burn somebody down, it makes it so much more exciting. Of course, you have uh, casters who are going to be calling everything out for you. You can tell the excitement and the way that they talk and uh, cast on it, but it, it's really something that once you begin to understand the abilities and kind of what's going on, when it comes to those final matches at BlizzCon, it is so exciting. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. 
So uh, keep a lookout for that, guys. That's um, a, There's a lot of tournaments. I mean, with BlizzCon right around the corner, um, lots of tournaments and stuff going on. So, and again, give them a whirl. Give them a watch. You want to talk about, like, just sucking you in. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So... Very cool. Um, what do we? What, what else we got, Reb? Anything? Um, yeah, we do have an add-on for the week, and now yeah. it is something that is a little bit difficult to display on stream. So I don't know if we're going to be I got uh, able to show everything. Um, but basically, what I used to find very fun on raid nights amongst my group of friends is we would do rolls for gold, and those who had an abundant amount of gold would do these rolls against one another, and um, you s determine what the uh, the max level of gold you want to essentially gamble mm -hmm. and um, the difference between the two roles is what the loser would have to pay the winner the one who got the higher roll and I found an add-on that actually accommodates this very well and it's called cross gambling okay so not that I'm promoting any addictive habits uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have seen many a friends go broke from this um, but essentially you determine the max level of uh, gold that you are trying to set the game at and you can put this into either guild chat or raid chat so that your friends, your guildies, your raid members can join in on this just by selecting one after you have put in uh, a, a certain emote into the the channel and it will let everybody roll and <laughs> determine and keep track of who has won the gold and how much they've won. Okay. And it, it gets to be a thing where if you, you get too far into it, it, it can be very addictive. You may say, oh, well, I'm down, I'm down 50,000, but let's roll one more time. I may make it all up again. And it, it's one of those things that, you know, I may highlight something that is for RP, something for Auction House. This is really for those... Uh, those players who are sitting on a mound of gold who may be a little bit bored and 500000 is not really much to gamble with, mm -hmm. this is for you. All right, so it doesn't actually like take the gold, right? You still have to, still like the still, honor system? Yep, you still have to trade it. So this is meant to be done, of course, amongst friends or guildies or, or raid members. Um, but it, it's pretty neat that it, it keeps a record of it. And you can determine how high you want it to go. Um, you can ban or exclude certain people so that they can't partake in it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a really cool and unique add-on that I found. Yeah. And for those of you listening at home, basically, there's a little box. Um, and the box has got uh, uh, four clickable buttons on the right. Um, one is a user roll, so when you click on that, it does a roll for you. So I click on that, and I just roll a 66 out of 100. Now, in the center of the box, I can put a number that I want. The, the, the center of the box right now says 100, so I'm going to roll between 1 and 100. But if I change that to 1,000 and I, and I click my user roll again, uh, I just rolled a 947. Um, and then there's it gives you everything as far as like you know um, your stats. Um, it, you can control whether you're talking in guild or raid chat. Um and so, yeah, it basically is just one add-on that uh, that handles all of the, all of the, you know, your gambling. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a raid, and we've all been in that instance, those of us who've ever done um, those long raid nights, we've always uh, all experienced that time where it's a little bit of a lull. Somebody's gone AFK. Somebody's taking care of their dog that just pooped on the ground. That was me one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but something's <laughs> happening and you're on a hold. You may be waiting for somebody. And this is kind of a fun mini game to take part in if you're not afraid of parting ways with a little bit of gold. Yeah. So is there an area in WoW now where it's like all the people who just like got too addicted and they're all like all done and they're all like sitting in the corner like you get some change yeah 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 it's, they're kind of like this <laughs> i actually did see my main tank from a previous raid team um he lost all of his gold and he had to get like uh, loans essentially from wow. our other guildies it was very sad <laughs> <laughs> loan sharks it totally wow. made, yeah totally made me think of this I'm do you break their finger me, Joe Rogan, that you might not know i smoke rocks <laughs> <laughs> very true very true there's the the homeless uh, minority in order mar and stormwind yeah yeah 
So yeah, give that a whirl, guys, in the show notes. And the show notes are on are going to be on blizzpro.com. You're going to see everything. You're going to see links to the add-ons that we talk about, links to um, uh, the deck of the week in Hearthstone, all sorts of every, every you know, it, it's all in that article there. So uh, stay tuned for blizzpro.com, or you can follow at blizzpro or at twizbp. I'll post when the show is up, and uh, you guys can check that out there. So. Uh, let's see here. How about, uh, how about some Diablo news, man? There's again, uh, here's my prediction is Diablo news is a little lackluster because they released a big content patch and everything's bumping along, but I think BlizzCon is going to roll around the corner and they are just going to hork Diablo news everywhere. That's just me though. What do you think? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard the verb hork before, but I, I like it. I think that's very accurate. It is I think hork. we're. Yeah. Before I get into it, I think I think you're right. I think we're gonna get like an expansion announcement, at BlizzCon. I, think I would be right. very surprised if we did not. But uh, yeah, like it is, anytime a new patch and season comes out, you get a ton of excitement right away, and then it kind of dwindles. You know, we'll get mm-hmm. some small patches here and there, but we haven't gotten any of those yet. But we do have something kind of fun this week. There's a Reddit post with like 680 upvotes, or I should say 680 more than there are downvotes by the non-hacker. And this guy has done an awesome thing. He's gone on Reddit and he's compiled all of the suggestions that the Diablo community has been giving into one post. And mm-hmm. then people can comment on that post. And if the comments are popular, he'll add it to the main post. Okay. So you guys should totally go uh, check that out. It's called Fixes You Want in Patch 2.3.1, which will be the next patch. And um, I just wanted to go through some. If you guys want to jump in, feel free. Sure. And I'll just uh, get through these really quickly. Uh, some of the bug fixes, and a lot of these you guys have heard of before if you play Diablo and keep up with it, but um, a lot of times the, not a lot of times, the cube, Kanai cube will sometimes take all of your mats instead of just the right amount. Right. That's a bug fix we're hoping to get taken care of. Uh, the hell tooth set for Witch Doctor causes a lot of lag. We're hoping to get that taken care of. Sometimes the Rift Guardian marker on the map is not where it's supposed to be. A lot of little bugs, but those aren't really the exciting things. Mm-hmm. Exciting things are things that they could change in the game, of course. And one of those things that a lot of the community is asking for is a changing of the infernal machines. So I don't know if any of the three of you guys have gotten a Hellfire amulet in Diablo before. If I did, I didn't know it. No, yeah, I, you. I can no. assure you I didn't. <laughs> you would know because it takes some doing. They've made it a lot easier. It's a bit better than it was before. But one of the complaints of the community is no one can remember what machine goes to which Rift Guardian goes to which portal. And so a lot of people are saying, why don't we just rename the machines to the same name as the realm they open? If that doesn't make sense to you, then don't worry about it. But, <laughs> but, but if it does, you're not alone. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, death's breaths are a hot topic. If you guys don't know, when you get into the higher rifts, eventually you don't pick up much at all except for legendaries and death's breaths. And death's breaths. Well, sorry, just, just for clarification, he's saying breaths, not death's breasts. Bre- death's breasts. We didn't think death's that. breasts. <laughs> Much more exciting oh item. Goodness. No one misses this. <laughs> but death's breaths, on the other hand, they look just like rare items. They look just like another yellow on the ground. And a lot of times they go missed. And if you're like really into efficiency, you want to kill stuff and then just keep moving. You don't want to have to sit there scrolling through the text. And so a right. lot of people are like, just make death's breaths auto pickup just like gems and gold we just want to walk over them and and get all of them automatically um but the devs have said they feel like the item feels less real when it's automatically picked up and so they're saying no we want you to have to click on it there's something that makes the item feel more real when you first to click on it to pick it up so people are saying okay well if we have to click on it make it another color mm-hmm. or make it mm-hmm. stand out do do something so that we're not missing these death's breaths. And I, I would be surprised if the devs didn't address that because a lot of people are complaining about that. Um, a lot of people are asking if we have a legendary that we haven't extracted the legendary power from yet, tell us so we know to keep that legendary. Oh, that's a good um, point. Yep. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people. This is the one that I thought really needs to be in the game is a build or gear set save feature. And you guys have all played WoW. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're in WoW... And you want to go from your healing build to your DPS build, you just change your build and, and you change your, your set. Like and buttons. Yep, set it and yeah. forget it. Exactly. Boom. Uh, you can't do that in Diablo right now. 
And it's a shame because, like, I I would like to play the Archon build sometimes and the Del Rasha build sometimes, but I just don't. I just play Del Rasha because I don't feel like going through and changing all my skills and all my gear. And so a lot of people are saying this. I'm hoping the devs find it worth putting in the game because that would make things so much easier for people who like playing multiple builds. And the devs like to encourage people to play multiple builds, so hopefully uh, they'll be into doing something like that. I'm not going to go through this whole list because it would take a long time <laughs> and a lot of it is just like real nuanced stuff. Right. But, but it's absolutely worth checking out. Yes, definitely worth checking out. And I just wanted to point out that these posts come out a lot amongst like all the games where, hey, devs, these are all the things we want. Why aren't you doing them? Yeah. And from a lot of the community, it seems like there's this assumption like, well, if we're all telling the devs we want this and the devs haven't already given it to us, then clearly the devs don't care, or they're not listening, or they're just doing something to make some more money. But I, I think that usually comes from innocent ignorance. Mm -hmm. No no judgment being thrown out, but a lot of people just don't know much about the dev process, and none of us really know all about it. But the development process is usually really nuanced amongst itself, because they have a lot of things to add in the game, and it's really hard for a player to know how much time each individual feature is going to take sure. and how the features are going to affect other things that are already in the game. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, they are, they're already fixing this stuff. I mean, we've seen this before where people complain for months. It's like, okay, the devs aren't doing it. And then we get one big patch, and it's all fixed. Sure. And that, that a lot of times, that's going to come because... They're fixing it, but they're working on a version of the game that's not going to come out for a few months. Exactly. So some, exactly. Yeah, they can't so fix one fix problem. Here. Yeah, they can't fix one problem because you don't know what's going to what what else is coming down the pipe. So it's like, yeah. how do we fix this problem and not have it affect what's going to be coming out in six months from now? Yeah. So they're you know it's two point three right now. They're probably already finishing up. 2.3.1, 2.3.2 is going to have a different set of code. So if they want to fix something now, they might fix it in the 2.3.2 code, sure. which means they can't release it in 2.3.1. It wouldn't work. And and it's just, there's a lot of nuances. So I just want to say, don't think that the devs aren't listening. I've talked to the community managers. We've all talked to a lot of community managers. And they listen. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you that's why I get excited when I see Reddit posts like this. I don't want anyone to be discouraged. Go on there and like voice your opinion because like that's all community managers do. Sure, they just read everything. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Way to go, the non-hacker for putting that together. I think that stuff is very much appreciated by the the team at Diablo. Absolutely. So very cool. Well, and uh, speaking of community managers, almost as if it was um, uh, pre-planned, but not. Uh, community manager Worthen uh, just popped into the chat room to say hello. Very, very awesome. Uh, he did some serious beastly casting uh, this past weekend in the world of the Hearthstone. So, um, speaking of which, why don't we uh, why don't we just jump into the Hearthstone news? Um, first, uh, one of the things that, that I found out uh, shortly after last week's show was that the popular Hearthstone streamer Raynad uh, is apparently giving up streaming. Or he's, I don't know if he's actually actually announced that that's what's happened. I know he's leaned towards that way. Um, he says that it isn't the same community that it was in 2012 uh, when he first started streaming and the toxicity of Twitch chat has made it not worth it to him. Um, now, that's kind of a, kind of a big deal because um, he is the, uh, uh, the head chieftain of Tempo Storm. Uh, in the Hearthstone team and uh, or Hearthstone scene, and so that's kind of a big deal. And um, but here's my thoughts on this: Do I get it? Yes, I get it absolutely. Sometimes you get burnt out on it because, like, I, I, I hang out in some of these chats, Forzen's, uh, Forzen's chat. Um, you know, I've hung out in Raynad's chat or whatever, and the the community can be just brutal, absolutely brutal. So um, there's a part of me that says. I don't blame you. There's a part of me that says, I get it. I get what you're going through, and that sucks. And maybe the only way to teach them a lesson or not teach them a lesson, they may not care, um, is, to, is to take it away from them and just stop. I, I, I know I, I, I get that. Um, one of the reasons, and I know Stutter feels a little bit differently on this, but uh, one of the reasons that I do respect him is because he's not afraid to just basically just say what it is. Like, popularity or not, this is this is my thoughts on this. And 
you know, I'm sorry. The thing that you, the thing that you said is stupid. And I, I'm sorry. That's, I'm not going to partake in that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be, you know, whatever. And he's just not afraid to, to stick it to people when they're being dumb. And I think that there's not enough of that that goes on. Um, but that's just me. Stutter, what are your thoughts? I mean, let's be real here. He wasn't my favorite streamer. I've never hit that. But at the same time, it is still kind of a loss for, like, Hearthstone in general because he was a big name. Like, in, you know, any any streamer that gets, you know, 10K views or more, if you lose them, yeah. it sucks. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Uh, I, I don't know. He... It, it, on one sense, it's going to be nice because you're not going to have everyone claiming that every deck's a Raynad deck, which is really annoying. Mm-hmm. On the other side, like <laughs> I just said, it was, you know, it sucks. Hmm. I'm, I, I'll tell you right now, I never watch them, but I do know that it's still a loss for the community. I don't Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Because you know what? Here's what, here's what, you know who, you know who pays for this? Is the people like me, the people like you, the people like you at home that legitimately want to watch a professional player and see the decisions that he makes and where his mindset's at and why he did the way he did because you can try and learn from him. Why? Because you look up to him. Because he's he's a figure that that is a respectable source of news and or of not news, but of, of, of information and gameplay. And you want to learn and you want to be a better player to play a game that you really, really like. And guess who's on the losing end? that person um now now i will tell you that uh that uh our twitch chat which is freaking awesome um is bringing up a lot of a lot of really good points um uh ace rain says the amount of hate speech is ridiculous twitch needs some kind of perma ban for knuckleheads who spew bigotry and racist speech i agree that is there's zero tolerance zero tolerance for that nonsense and people just abuse the system at that point in time and um so the trouble with that, you can't ban them though, because well, you can ban them, but they'll just make a new name. Yeah. 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 It's just so easy to do that and come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, we had that all the time when I was streaming full time. I'd have people come in and just, you know, trolling nonstop, spamming all chat, and and <laughs> Sorry, some of these guys. people will just—they have no problems making accounts all day long. I mean, I've I multiple time ban- banned twenty, thirty, forty usernames. From the same person, um, and if you if you complain to Twitch enough, they will do an IP ban. But the thing mm-hmm. is, it's just getting easier and easier to even work around that. Sure, sure. So, yeah, it's almost impossible to keep them out completely. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I mean, I don't, and, and th- that's kind of where my hat's off a little bit. Where it's like, you know what, Twitch, I don't need your help on this one. I'm gonna pull the plug myself. That's somebody who's like, like to me that just says like he did this he did this for fun he did this for his passion for the game he did this for the right reasons he's not in it for the money he's not in it for you know because i mean like there are some streamers that that will put up with that and do whatever why because people are just throwing money at them and so it's like hey you know what sure you just donated 27 dollars to me say whatever you want and they they put up with it but i think it just feeds the fire so anyways huh. You had a much more optimistic view on that. Because when I heard his reasoning, I thought, meh, I don't think that's really why he stopped. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. There could be something else for why he stopped, and he, this could be like the formal... The front? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, this is why I stopped. Oh, yes. Tom Brady did not deflate those footballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's what makes me say... Th- here's what makes me say that it's not a front is because he has stuck it to the community in the past and been like, look, you are stupid. You are morons. You know, like, look at the things that you're saying. Look at how you're acting. Look at, you know, you're just idiots. And he's, he's not afraid to to, to say that. So that's why it's kind of like when, when the, the straw that broke the camel's back happened, uh, that's what made me believe that like, you know, he just got sick of it. So in the for what it's worth department. That's just where I'm sitting. So let me know what you guys think. Podcast at blizzpro.com. Um, would love to read your email on the show and get your thoughts. So um, anyways, uh, that is that. Let's talk a little bit uh, about some of the uh, uh, some of the actual Hearthstone news that is going on. Yeah, so we had the road, uh, the road to BlizzCon, which is nearing its end. This is 
been a huge tournament. Yes. It's been going on for like ever. Let's be real here. It, like I, I tuned into stream. I think this was like two days ago or one day. I, I can't even keep track of how many days it's been going, but it was like day six. Mm-hmm. You know, day mm-hmm. six, and they've been playing like I, I anytime I tune in, there's like a freaking, you know, Road to BlizzCon tournament going <laughs> on. It's crazy how many people are playing in that. Yep. It is yep. insane. Yep. And the and, people uh, who are sticking around and making it further, like they're looking all malnourished and stuff. You know. I know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they sleep. They don't sleep. I was like, man, I couldn't ever do that anymore. <laughs> like, I couldn't stick around and play all day every day. Like, I have a job. Mm-hmm. Man. So, but I guess for those guys, like that is their job, you know. Yeah. Um. But so, it's nearing its end. We know most of the players who will participate in the regional championships. So in North America, we got purple. Best name ever. Yes. Just, just purple. Purple. Yep. <laughs> purple. I want a shirt. If he ever like has a jersey, I want that jersey. Uh, VLPS. <laughs> Jab. Jab was there last year. Mm-hmm. I think he made top 16 in BlizzCon. I'm not positive, though. Hot form. Korea. Korea. Who's actually Korea. Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs> and spelled with a C, not a K. That's right. Uh, Mulligal. I don't know how to pronounce some of these things. Yeah. Nias. And uh, Trump. Yep. And how does he have time to compete in this when he's running for president? <clears throat> he's he, you oh, know, <laughs> dude's doing Reb is right. on it tonight. Yeah. Yes. Wow, Reb. Service, service just sweeping shade. up, sweeping up, sweeping up. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> janitor here. <laughs> uh, uh, for EU, we got this or this is how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, life coach Oskaka, Gara eighty nine, G E R A, not Gara. Yeah. Uh, is this Ho? Hoage? Ho- uh, oh, ho. Ho-I? I'm going to call him Ho. He's a Ho. <laughs> yeah, Ho with a J at the end. Mm-hmm. Nairia, Pavel, and Maverick. So yeah. there's some new names not from last year. One of the things I see that isn't there yet uh, is Firebat. Yeah. Very surprising to me. Yep. You know what, though? It all comes down to the cards. You know? It does. I mean, that's... That does, I mean, that's what... It's what's good. It's a blessing and a curse with this game because if you, if you get the cards that you need, guess what? You're gonna, if you know, you're gonna make it far in this tournament. Or I could play a great deck, but if I get all my late game cards and I'm playing Face Hunter, guess what? It's done and over with. So, um, chat room says Firebat dropped. Firebat's out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I, I'm just, you know, it's one of those things where he won last year and he's not in it. It's just a surprise. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was my. That was point. your point. I mean, it's just. He's a good player. Sure, sure. Um, also, guys, Ben Brode sat down with Tim Clark, a PC gamer, for an interview where they talked about the state of the game. So, Stutter, why don't you just hit on some of the high points that came out of that interview, man? I mean, deck slots, they're going to expand them. They've been saying that for a little while, though. I think like, it got I, confirmed. I think it's one of those things where it's like, man, we want to do this and we want to give this community, but there's like better things we can spend our time on, you know? Yeah. Like, let's be real here. It'd be great to have 10, 11 deck slots, but 9... To me, it's pretty all right. You know, it's not. It doesn't really hinder me. You know, yeah. I can always find a deck that I'm willing to delete. Well, and with every class, you have like Warlock. I would like to have a Handlock deck and a Zoo deck that mm-hmm. I can just tweak on the fly, and that's that. I'd like to have my, um, oh god, like my my um, ramp and- ramp druid. And my token druid, my Patreon warrior, my control warrior. There's just two two strong variations of both decks that you can just kind of go through and tweak a little bit as you're as you're going on the fly and not have to completely mm-hmm. rebuild a deck. You're absolutely right. I mean, it's one of those things. Like, it's definitely a quality of life issue. I'm just saying. Like, I think they'd be like, I think their big thing is they really want to work on the new cards and everything like that instead of, like, they want to work on deck slots, but they want to work on other things more. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's hard to give the community everything. Everything they want. that they want. I get it. I get yeah. it. And so, so I think I, I, it's coming. It's coming, guys. That's what I can tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that everyone will say that, but I don't know when. Not all Inspire cards were targeted for Tier 1 decks, guys. This is expected for every single expansion. You know, expansion. Like, you're going to get a few playable cards and a lot of, like, kind of minor cards, which are maybe really fun to play, but not that good, you know? Yeah. Um, And one of the things they also said was, you know, for the longest time, people were you know, crying for a Paladin Secrets buff. Mm-hmm. So, like, all the bad Paladin Secrets, but Ben Bro came out and said, Mysterious Challenger may not be what it is today 
if those if we buff those paladin secrets. And one of the things you guys got to remember is paladin secrets only cost one. You know, yeah. the secrets can't be that good if they cost one. Right. Uh, and event is pretty good. Yes. Costing one. Yes. Um, secrets paladin isn't also concerning towards them because you can't OTK them. Mm-hmm. It's just one turn kill. And they're also not in love with the grim patron gameplay, but people don't win with it enough that it's not like to nerf standards yet. They're like, well, let's just kind of let it happen. Let's right. see what happens. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's uh, also the deck is very difficult to play. So yeah. that, that goes a long way too. like, you can't, I played this week, guys, I played against some grim patrons and it's like, I could tell they did not know what they were doing at all. Like I was playing control warrior versus a grim patron warrior and like he was executing my acolyte of pain and stuff like that and i'm just like brother i love the fact that you're giving this a whirl i really do but man you're you're doing it wrong <laughs> yeah yeah i could definitely see that happening i i experienced that friday night <laughs> <laughs> friday afternoon you know i was good you know saturday afternoon i was fine with it friday night i was not fine with it uh, <laughs> anyways and Last but not least, he says, Dragons are in an awesome place right now. And I agree, Ben Brode. I agree. But I want that on a shirt. Yeah. Just dragons are in an awesome place right now. And people would be like, what is wrong with this guy? He's wearing this stupid shirt. But doesn't matter. I'd wear it. <laughs> um, well, and you know what? Dragons. Dragons are in a, they're in a good place right now. But it's like... I don't know. It's it's t- the the game is uh, there's so many decks that are formed around just dragons when it's like when you have Nax cards and you've got TGT cards and you've got um uh black rock cards and stuff like that and it's like when most of the decks are formed around dragons that seems a little too pronounced to me, you well, know. One of the things is there's two things with that. First off, people want to say dragons. It's one of the few theme decks that work, right? Sure. So theme decks are really exciting because some people make I made pirates themed, very fun, not very good. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's a theme deck, and people like to play theme decks. You know, and dragons are cool in general, so people play it. Also, it's not that difficult of a deck to play. You know, it kind of plays like ramp druid, where you just kind of like sit there and you throw out your threats, and if you curve out, you do well. If you don't curve out, there's not many choices you have. You know, if you're not loaded with 20 cards in your hand. 10 cards in your hand. I know somebody's going to correct me on that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you're not loaded with all these different thoughts. It's like, well, I have turn 3. I have my 3 drop. Let me play that. I have turn mm-hmm. 4. Let me play my 4 drop. I have turn 5. Let me play my 5 drops. So you might have to like choose between either playing your 5 drop or board clearing. That might be a choice, but yep. at the same time, it's not like... It's not very... Your decisions don't affect the outcome as much as some others. Like, you'd see, like, with the old miracle style, with sure. the old Merkel, Merkel. I can't pronounce Merkel. that word apparently. Um, yeah, so it, it's I like that sense too. Like it, it allows people to play a fun, exciting deck, and it's not that difficult to play. Sure, cool. Well, that was uh, that was pretty much the highlights of uh, of the interview. There's a little bit more that that came out. You guys can check that out. Um, let's talk about the World Championship. I mean, we got you know just like in WoW, we got a Hearthstone World Championship, prize pool 250k. Yep. I mean, nice chunk of change. Uh, number of players will be 16. Schedule is October 20 to 31, 9 a.m. PDT. Yep. That is, if I do my math correctly, that's 10 Central. 11. No, 11 Central, 12 Pacific. Yes. No. Yes. 12 yes. Eastern. Or yeah, Eastern. Yes. Carry yes, the. Yes, I, yes. I didn't carry the one there. I should have carried the one. <laughs> I was like, 9 a.m. Yeah. PDT so, and 12 yeah. 9 Pacific, 12 11 Central, yeah, 12 yeah, yeah. Eastern. So, I mean, it's just it's just going to be an awesome time. You guys should definitely watch it. This is one of those things where, you know how where you, you know, you watch the WoW arenas and it's like, this is really cool, you know, but I really don't understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, like Archon was saying earlier, this is one of those things where if you played even a little bit of Hearthstone, you can understand it, you know? Yep, absolutely. You can, it, it's just, it, it's a slower-paced game, and, but you, you still... Have those nuances. That's why you know you see some repeat people in the Arsenal World Championships. You see a lot of them. Oh, absolutely, dude. But you you can understand what they're doing. Like maybe yeah. you can't do that thought process that fast, but it's still it's it's just cool because you can participate in everything like that. And plus two hundred fifty k anytime that's on the line. That's awesome. Yeah, 
know, that's great for esports in general. So cool. Well, um, before we get into the Heroes of the Storm news, guys, as with every week, we guys get, we we bring you guys a uh, a deck of the week, and um, this week is absolutely no different. So why don't we do a? Um, this is the the deck that that Masan was playing um, earlier this week, and uh, I thought it was really cool. So Stutter, why don't we break this down really quick? I mean, it's you know it's ramp druid sort of guys. It's like ramp ish, but it's got double combo in it. So you got two Innervates, it's Druid, guys. Nothing else needs to be said. Two Living Roots, this is a new card. I love this card. Mm -hmm. So it either removes a Knife Jug or removes a two-drop that's really nice, or it gives you two 1-1s one on and turn one. I, I just love this card. It's a great addition to the game. It's a simple little card that Blizzard added that I think gives Druid a lot. Like, it just it matters to Druid, is what my, my point is. Mm -hmm. uh, we got two Wild Growths. It's ramped Druid, guys, so you're going to see that. You got two Darnesses, Aspirants, Aspirants. I cannot Aspirants. Can not Darnassus. contain herself right now. <laughs> yeah, Darnassus, Aspirants. Okay, As Aspirants. Yep. Yeah, the, what Reb said. Yeah, is what Reb the said. The Darnasses. <laughs> this is, this is like a wild growth, but it's a little better and worse, so it helps it's, you versus It's an alternative in case you don't get your wild growth. This helps you limp along on the ramp ladder. Yeah, and the big thing is it's like it plays around some extra cards, right? Yeah. So it plays around the... Um, Oh my god, the Cabal Shadow Priests. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Or anytime they take control, you know, mm -hmm. if maybe they throw it on an MCT. But it's just because they can't take it or else they lose it. It also plays around uh, Mirror Image. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, Mirror Entity. Entity, that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Mirror Entity. I'm going to mix this up for the rest of my life. Oh, uh, we got one Wrath. This is surprising because two Wraths is generally the consensus. But at the same time, you know, you got the you got earlier game with Living Roots. And with the, mm -hmm. what Reb said. Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, we got two. Prince. <laughs> yep. We got two. Uh, two Savage Roars, two Force of Nature combos. So that's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. A BGH, which is standard because, you know, you got no real way to take well, take out a big big creature. Plus, you know, mm -hmm. Doctor Boom's played and everything. Still, we got uh, two MCTs. This is to help for AOE, right? It, it's it's like basically saying. A lot of people are just massing minions, so this will help you swing the board back in your favor. It, it yes. almost acts like another kind of makeshift swipe, if you will. Well, and also, if again, in case you don't get your Wild Gross, you don't get your Darnassus Ass Prince, or you don't get your Innervates, <laughs> and they load the board up early game, this is kind of a little equalizer. So, yeah. It's, uh, like, like you know, you see so many freaking paladins these days. Yeah. So many paladins, so many patron. Patron yeah. works. Yeah. Right? So you got MCT there. You got two swipes, because it's true. Two keepers, because it's true. Two piloted shredders, because this is the greatest four drop in the world. Yep. Um, It's as simple as that. It's just so hard to remove. And anytime you have Force of Nature and Savage Roar, you want a piloted shredder, because it, it acts like a little mini token. You got two Druid of the Claws, because it's Druid. Force of Nature, we already mentioned that. And Emperor Thorison, this is just a great card for Druid in general because it allows you to get off the Force of Nature combo way faster, right? So it goes from a 9 mana cost to a 7 mana cost, and that's a big deal. We got Sylvanas because Sylvanas helps you control anything. It's like a beefy, better MCT because you can control when it dies and what it takes if you play around it right. Mm -hmm. We got two Ancient of Lores because it's Druid, guys. We got an Ancient of War, and this is to help prevent against aggro. Because you can shut down any aggro deck if you get that big bad boy in taunt mode. Mm -hmm. And plus, every once in a while, you get to play in a 10-5, and that's exciting. Anytime I did that this smack... week. Yep. Yeah, but don't do that often, guys. It's no. usually not the right play. Uh, but the big thing that allows this card to exist still is the lack of uh, TBK, or the Black Knight. Mm -hmm. And then we finish it off with, of course, Dr. Boom, yep. because... That's just because it's Dr. Boom. It's yep. Dr. Boom. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty standard. So um, so guys, uh, again, just as a uh, as a quick reminder, this this deck list and everything like that is gonna be on the Twizcast post on blizzpro.com. So guys, make sure you check that out. Um, you're you're gonna get links to uh, to everything there. So uh, for all, all of your other Hearthstone news and uh, deck lists and meta reports and stuff like that, make sure you guys are going to hearthstone.blizzpro.com. Uh, as soon as the news breaks, the details can be found right there. And the, with all the tournaments and everything that's going on, we are on top of it. So uh, let's jump into, 
let's jump into a little bit of uh, of Heroes of the Storm. Now, um, one of the things that they introduced that I was pretty blown away, and it wasn't until somebody on Twitter tweeted me and they were like, have you checked this set out? And I was like, what? I hadn't even seen it. Uh, they've introduced a new skin set for Uther. It's the Judgment Uther Bundle. That is a replica of the Tier 1 Paladin set in World of Warcraft. What? Yes. Yeah, that it's sounds, pretty awesome. I would start playing Heroes of Storm for that. Yes. That is like the best set ever in WoW. Yes. Uh, the bundle comes with Uther himself, all three skins, and the Judgment Mount. Mm -hmm. uh, it's trimmed in gold and red, and it actually it looks pretty amazing. Um, don't forget, guys, that the through the dynamic pricing, with that being in effect, um, if you already own Uther and some of the skins, the price is discounted to a point where you're only buying what you don't have as opposed to buying things that you already own, which everybody hates. So um, so keep that in mind. Like I do not own Lumberjack Uther with the Fat Daddy package. Don't own him. Um, so for me to get this bundle and whatever, I think it was like $14. Um, so it's, mine was partially discounted. Um, but yeah, I, absolutely, guys. Check that out and at least go to, go to the store and look at the skin. I mean, it just... it's. 400 shades of, of amazing. Um, one of the things that uh, that did happen was the Americas tournament, and again, that's one of the things that got me super fired up about Here's the Storm. Um, Cloud9 defeated Tempo Storm in an epic five-game series to claim the title of America's champions, um, as well as a $40,000 prize pool. The match was kind of a roller coaster. Uh, Cloud9 won the first two games in the best of five match, only to see Tempo Storm take the next two games to tie it up. Uh, and took it to game five. The match was decided on Blackheart's Bay, and Cloud9 was in control the entire game. The team comp that sealed their victory was Zagara, Mirrodin, Malfurion, Jaina, and Tyrand. Um, and I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. I looked at that, and there that is a whole bunch of lockdown. That is a team full of lockdown. You've got Zagara. Uh, with the Maul, you've got Murden stuns all for days. You've got Malfurion roots. You've got Jaina um, freezing you everywhere. And if you got a, a, a Tyrand that uh, um, that is on point with her stuns, I mean, you're just you're locked down the whole time. So that was a huge stun comp. Um, uh, but you know what? Congratulations to both the teams uh, for a well played series, and they will both be moving on to Heroes of the Storm World Championships at BlizzCon later this year. Um, so speaking of the Heroes of the Storm World Championship, this has a prize pool of $500,000 where you've got eight teams of five players and that's on October 28th at 1.30 Pacific. So it's after the Hearthstone, um, it is after the WoW and it's, 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 um, yeah, it's at 1.30. I'm not sure when the StarCraft event is or whatever. I didn't look at that. Shame on me. Um, but the matches consist of, uh, um, a two dual tournament group, uh, two dual tournament groups in the in the first round. No teams are, are going to be eliminated during opening week, but each team will get to show their stuff in the initial matches uh, of each group. So uh, that's kind of how it's going to go. Now, guys, when it comes to viewing these tournaments and everything, you're going to be using Twitch, okay? And um, there's kind of a big thing that's happening. I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but it seems like Blizzard keeps jumping into bed more and more and more with Twitch. And you now have the ability to merge your Twitch account with your Battle.net account and actually reap, a, reap some rewards. Um, according to the post by Blizzard, and they said, and I quote, For a limited time, anyone who watches Heroes of the Storm regional championships while logged into Twitch with a linked Battle.net account will receive a special Stormwatcher portrait in Heroes of the Storm. Um, and uh, the, the Stormwatcher portrait, I mean, it kind of looks like a... Kind of reminds me of like the the ice giant in Hearthstone a little bit. He's kind of got like a, I don't he's know. The Frost Lord Rexar. Is that what it is? I thought that's what you looked like when you woke up in the morning before you showered. I do with the helmet on and everything. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Things get intense. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys want to merge your accounts, it's actually a fairly sim simple process. You go to Twitch, and if you're logged in, you click on your name at the top right hand part of the screen, and a little drop down box comes down. You click on settings. And then across the top of the screen, you're going to see a bunch of tabs. And one of them says Connections. If you click on the Connections tab, you're going to see a Blizzard logo. Click the check mark next to the Blizzard logo. And make sure you have your Battle.net launcher running in the background. Um, from there, it's going to automatically connect to your Battle.net account. And you're off to the races. Very, very painless. Very, very simple. Um, after that, hopefully, uh, if you guys caught this early enough, hopefully you tuned into the America's Championship 
um, because you guys are going to be the one of the, the first to receive the new portrait. Uh, the portrait itself is not going to be available in game until October, so don't freak out if you don't see it right away. Um, and if you missed it this weekend, I'm sure you're going to have another opportunity to get that or something else uh, by tuning into another Heroes event. Um, and we will let you guys know if more information on that is going to be released or not. So. Word, word. You know, seeing what they have linked with it, being able to link your Battle.net and your Twitch account, it makes me think that how many processes or how many things did they have to throw out that they could have linked as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, I, I, I'm sure that there's there's going to be more offered or not offered than, than just a silly portrait, Reb. Exactly. So, so anyways, um, I could not agree uh, agree more with that entire statement. So, why don't we just take a moment and discuss some of the possibilities, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, off we go. The top 10 items that you won't see from linking your Battle.net account to your Twitch account. Ringing in at number 10, the moose that Ghostcrawler promised everyone years ago. You will likely not be getting that. Number 9, you won't get free WoW subscription time. Well, unless you subscribe to their channel for $15 a month. That's a joke. They don't charge for subs. Try to follow me here, people. Number eight, a Deckard Kane plush toy that actually smells like old dude. Old dude. I love that smell. <laughs> yeah, Number really. seven, a Hearthstone card back with the animation of Ben Brode laughing at you. Although it would be awesome, I wouldn't bank on it. I wouldn't either. Number six, you will not be getting a pair of pants to wear during the streams because, let's face it, no one in the gaming community has a use for them. Not, not a single person. Uh, the number five item you won't see from linking your Battle.net account to your Twitch account a permanent window with a non-stop stream of Raynad's Twitch chat. And for that, we are thankful. Number four, Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Wait a minute, did you say Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker? I did, and I'll link it for you too. Thank God. God damn. Number three, you won't be getting an avatar of a slightly overweight older man who is barely clothed and runs around with his butt cheeks hanging out. You have to create a level one barbarian to get that. That's true. <laughs> Number two, a Murloc icon that you can spam chat with. Why? Because we're all super thrilled over the Kappa face and we didn't want that to go away. No, we absolutely wouldn't. And the number one item you won't get from linking your Battle.net account to your Twitch account, a crappy top ten list of things you aren't going to get. Why? Because we just gave it to you. I mean, what? We did, right? It's true. <laughs> we did. Today, we salute you, Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man! You dare dream of a world where the fire animation is something you can easily walk out of. Get out of the fire! You boldly embark on quests that take four times as long. I don't know if I'm still in combat! And one day, you'll actually be able to see your bobber dip when you fish. I don't know if I should click now! And Moonguard will no longer kick you due to FPS problems. Mail not up looking for fun. So here's to you, Mr. Salton of Suck. DoghouseSystems.com can build you a rig and put you back in the game with the rest of us. You deserve it. Your raid team and arena team deserve it. And so do the rest of us. Mr. Three Frames Per Second Man. Go to doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code TWIZ at checkout to double your memory. TWIZCast would also like to remind you to game responsibly. When sitting here, copy in the mail at the home 20. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the part of the show where we read our emails, and if you guys would like to reach out to us, you can do so by dropping us a line, podcast at blizzpro.com. We would love to hear your thoughts um, and, uh, you know, be more than happy to read them on the air. This week, actually, we didn't get any emails, so is what it is. The silent That's mass on you out there. Guys. That's on you That's, guys. It yeah. is. I could I could like Mad Lib and you know make up a, an email right now if you'd like. Someone give me an adjective and a noun. <laughs> Do you have a Mad Lib book? Sexy <laughs> and stutter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's save that. Let's save that for after hours. Yes. So, 
Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things, though, um, that we we do, um, we do have this week, as a matter of fact, and I'm uh, very excited about this, is that we do have iTunes reviews, guys. iTunes reviews puts us on the map. Um, when people do a search for Blizzard podcast or World of Warcraft or Heroes of the Storm or whatever like that, the more five-star reviews we have, the higher on that list we get. So um, everyone certainly matters. Um, and so if you have the uh, the, the opportunity to uh, to go over there and uh, uh, and give us one, certainly be appreciated. So let's uh, let's get the old music cranking. This week's five-star reviews come from Smurfed. He says, the much-needed return. Twizcast has been and will continue to be one of the best podcasts out there. Knowledgeable and entertaining, the crew will bring you the latest news and make you laugh while doing it. If you haven't given them a listen and want to know what all the fuss is about, put them in your ears and you'll see that they're no joke. The second one we got is from Sucker, who says, it is about time. He says, so psyched to have this show back. Longtime listener and long life fan of Twiz and the whole gang. Finding out this show made its triumphant return made my whole week. Twiz cast or no cast. So thank you guys very much for that. Seriously, it is unbelievably, unbelievably appreciated uh, what you guys do for this show and keeping it going and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's a little pat on the back. So, um... Let's see here. Well, uh, I guess just before we blast out, uh, I wanna I wanna give everybody a big thank you for uh, for who, who has their hands in in helping this show keep going. Um, that would be our patrons um, and the Blizz Pro staff and you guys as my co-host. Big thank you to that. Uh, you can find it on iTunes. You can find it. Uh, you can find this show on the Blizz Pro YouTube channel the day after um, this show goes live. So it's gonna be out on Tuesday mornings. Um, and the audio is short to follow on iTunes. Uh, I think it's usually Wednesday, Thursday morning when we try and get it up there. So um, just keep checking your feed. And uh, if you want to get to the live show, you can go to twitch.tv slash blizzpro on uh, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Uh, and last but not least, if you are a big Heroes of the Storm fan, check us out on Tuesday night. We do the Heroes of the Storm Power Hour, which is divided into two separate podcasts or two separate sections. The first one is news and discussion, and the second one is all about team comp, and we jump into the Nexus, and we play games, and we have an awesome time. I've got awesome co-hosts. You guys have to check that out. Great time had by all. So um, stick around for the after hours, those of you in the chat room, because it's about to get real funky fresh. All right. Um, Archon, do you have anything you'd like to say for the uh, for the masses before we're off and up out this biz match? Yeah, I do want to do a really quick thanks to... Uh intelligent gluteus maximus for subbing to us on on patreon because he's a long time viewer of mine and then other than that may all of your drops be legendary and may all your legendaries roll ancient i love it i love it how about you reb i'd like to thank all of you in the chat room you make the live show so awesome and i would just like to say by fire be fabulous reb Neros has spoken and how about you mr stutter let's get weird Let's get weird. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. All these deep thoughts. All these deep He's thoughts. And after hours. Stutter says, let's get weird. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will be back next week. So, until then, game safe. Love one another. And please, everyone within the sound of my voice, take care. <laughs>